And welcome back to Landstriders Futures Edge server hosted by Aim to Game Servers. Oh yeah, and what a time lapse that was. That was not the view I wanted. This is nearly a thousand blocks placed. That really took me a lot longer than I was expecting to. And we've still got another four to go as it happens. I want to enclose this entire space in the uh, the blocks here. But it was a, a little longer to build it than I thought it was going to take, as you may have told by the length of that time lapse there. Oh, look at this thing over here. Uh, this is why I've got a roof on my cattle here, because Things keep coming in and having a go at my cattle. Most inconvenient. Uh, we, we have to say a small sorry to Garfield. Uh, we, we appear to have completely destroyed his house, and he's actually disappeared now. I'm not sure where he's hanging out. I, I had a walk around. But we have moved in with Armon. Yeah, Armon, his twin brother. You'll remember we met him earlier. We've moved in with him, got some cake, we've got a chest full of food and so much stuff from mining like so much and you will notice here that not all of it comes from the ground there was more than enough stuff from dungeons and uh, abandoned mine shafts and things like that in fact i want to show you something that is down here if we just come over this way a few of my cattle got loose this is no biggie to worry about let's just turn this around here and head towards my digging hole you can tell it's my digging hole because there is a craft bench outside now uh, some of you guys may have seen this already some of you may not but this comes down here and, and this is where it all starts getting a little bit uh, convoluted but down this way you will see that I have a mine face that I've been working on it's using the uh, three across one up pattern so you can see there's like this block of six 
uh, sorry, three by three blocks here, and I can see every single one of them. But not just that. If we go all the way down here, in fact, looking on my map, you can see some of the caves around that we've been exploring there are lots i mean i really cannot even begin to go into how extensive the cave system is around here but what i actually want to look at is down this way you may begin to see it uh, appearing on my map i have a small confession to share with you guys i did lose a life whilst being down here and mining just there in fact the reason that i did lose that life there if we can spot it this was open to the void well to this area here um but there's also another where is it was it up here yes another dungeon right here let's jump through can't, i can't even mount the stairs uh it's not what is displayed here this shows one of the funny crustacean things it's actually uh, a flying monster of some description i would take the torches out and show you guys but oh it's it's deadly perhaps when i have a little bit more time i'll set up a um a, a nice test area so we can see but also up in here we have got another one Whereas this actually is what's being shown. Maybe it is what's shown in the cage. I, I didn't quite remember properly. But yeah, this one drops glowstone, of all things. So that's pretty good. Uh, I've got myself a few music discs. But yeah, I'm go we're going to go back up to the surface because I have a few things, well, a few quests that we need to do. So back at the surface, indeed back at our house, Armand's house, you're right buddy, how are you doing? And the thing we need to address right now is, I don't know if you've noticed, but this is not the best of kitchen setups. Oh, hey there, how are you doing? My Brian, my progressive person. Uh, how are you doing? Right, yes, we are. We need to build a whole load of stuff, and a whole load of stuff that goes with this cooking for blockhead stuff. There we go, the tool rack and stuff like that. Uh, the main reason being is because there is an awesome quest. Let's go to the beginning once more this one here yeah this this is the one we're on and look at the rewards we get diamonds or gold I, i'm not sure which one we get but we need to make an oven a fridge a sink and a cooking table these things are not too difficult to make a death especially when you've been thinking ahead the first thing we need to do though is make this cooking for blockheads book now it is nice and simple and i should have everything we need in here so a bit of leather and three bits of sugar cane for a book Pow! Okay, we need to cook it somewhere. Let's get rid of all that. You can see I've been doing a little bit planning ahead. You guys will see what I mean in a second. Let's just throw that in there. That should work perfectly. All right, awesome. The next thing we need is actually super expensive, at least for me. Oh, I forgot to mention, got my first diamonds video. All right, cool. So we're going to grab two of those. Uh, and what's the next thing we need? Well, of course, we need two craft tables. Nice and simple to do as long as you've got the wood to do it with. Uh, I don't know why I've come into the craft bench. We didn't actually need it, but we will do so for this. I suppose it saves us going through too many menus. This is Cooking for Blockheads 2. Now, if you didn't know, Cooking for Blockheads books show you the recipes of what you can make with the stuff that you've got on you. The, well, that's what the Cooking for Blockheads 1 book did. This one enables you to click and get the stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the pot in my inventory, so it wouldn't let me do that there. But that's pretty good because I did not actually want to do that right now. We want to use it in the cooking table, which is just wood and black hardened clay. Now, that's why I've been preparing ahead. And also, I've managed to get myself a couple of ink sacks. So that's what's needed for the blick hardened clay. Nice. Now, I should have some logs in here. Power with the power of the JEI, it's not NEI, JEI, just enough items. Uh, I've managed to make my cooking table. Right, the next thing, of course, is the oven. This is super simple. The thing that I might be a little bit short of is glass. Haha, <laughs> it's almost like I had uh, prepared for that one as well. That one goes in the middle. I believe it's all the way around for this as well. Iron and a furnace. Thankfully, I should have, as you can see up here, an awful lot of iron. The factory blocks were made out of iron, so that's why I've got so many kicking around. Uh, and a furnace is nice and simple. I think we only need the one. In fact, I could have just ripped down one of the ones above me as they are entirely for cooking in and stuff like that. Okay, that's the oven. 
awesome. The fridge, nice and simple. Chest and iron doors. One of the, one of the nice things about this mod pack that I, I didn't really realise was a thing. If you have, let's say, something in your crafting grid, and you press and hold shift and then drag your mouse across as you're clicking, it will move everything out for you, which is like, pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, so what else was needed for the quest? I, I mean, a sink... I've never really got them to work properly. I know they provide water for the kitchen, but it just oh, it never really seems to work properly for me. But that appears to be all that is left. We need a bucket of water. Oh, a boucher. So we have the boucher. Though, unfortunately, I did just convert all my logs into planks. So we're going to have to get a few more out of here. Use the power of the J. Guys, guys, can, uh, can you not see I'm busy recording here? Do you have to push me around like that? And we have done Master Chef. Woo! Now, where are we going to go put all this stuff? Oh, I'm kind of feeling one of these blocks here. Now, let's, let's have a little talk about the design of this place. When I was originally marking all this out in a creative uh, world, I was like, hmm, maybe these guys could be like super spacious buildings for villagers to live in. But then I went and built the next floor up, which is just going to be little three by three shacks that we're going to keep villagers in. And I was like, wow, maybe this down here would be better off being shops and things like that. Because obviously we're going to be on the inside of a giant building here. So the the shops kind of make sense being down the bottom. There'll be like a massive courtyard lobby area and then ways up to all the different floors. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to try and imagine the vision with me here, guys. Um, I, I, I'll possibly show you some of my workings out in creative at some point but not right now. Okay, what we want to do first is pop down our fridge, our cooking table. Uh, we're going to put the oven away from the fridge and the sink. Now, there's a block here. We need to fill that up because these all talk to each other, but they only talk to each other if they're touching. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that somewhere we have this kitchen counter. Now, that is important. We've got a block of hardened clay and a chest not shapeless, it turns out. Okay, cool. Kitchen counter. Bam! Okay, that kind of all connects up nicely. Let's go and break some chests. I know, sounds crazy, but the chest in particular that I want to smash up is this one. Hey, Armon, how's it going? I'm moving out. I hope you don't mind. Well, I'm not totally moving out. I, I know, the look of glee in your face was almost overwhelming, but I will be gone soon, and I'll have you a nice new place. Nice being relative, as long as you don't talk about this one you're in already. All right, bye! Okay, so the reason that I grabbed all of this... Oh, I now notice that I'm totally overflowing, so I could have dropped something there. But anyway, I want to put these tool racks here, because these tools, if you put them on the racks, will talk to these blocks, and then you can use them all in the cooking for blockhead stuff. So let's, uh, I don't know, put some stuff in the fridge. Uh, let's... In particular, put the juicer down. Where, where is the juicer? Juicer and mixing bowl. Let's pop them up there. And then we come over to the cooking table. And we're like, hey, this melon juice. I'd like the melon juice, please. Uh, and you should just give it to me. There we go. Just as simple as that. Ah, oh, this is going to make my life so much easier. So I may have got a little bit carried away with the building here. My plan was actually just to roll this out across the other sides because you guys had seen me build this one, so there was no need to show you, like, building these blank walls here. I left this bit open because I want to build a sort of a major doorway through there. Uh, don't worry about these. We, we will talk about these in a second. Uh, but I didn't really do a very good job of that either because if we come around here, you can see that I've rolled it out across here, but I've left these... Uh, walls here now the reason for that is because i didn't know how the housing algorithm works you can see i took one out here and then i was like oh wait are the villagers gonna get moved places if i replace the black back wall or anything like that I i'm super worried about that sort of stuff after the uh, mysterious disappearance of garfield so i put this little walkway in here so we can go all the way up and i've put in Lots of, well, most of them are three by three rooms, uh, but you know, the, don't feel bad for the villagers. They've got a balcony, and also they have access to the beautiful communal living area that's going to uh, pop up down below. The problem is, we need to get rid of these houses. These houses just absolutely have to go. But I also promised you a little bit of a story. We've got some death over there, and you can see that I have got a marker for Jester's base. That's because one day I logged onto the server, and he was like, hey, dude. 
I could really use some help. I managed to teleport myself down to the lowest level of the dungeon, and I've lost all my stuff, and now there's loads of monsters in the way, and I can't get it. And I was like, well, I'm probably not going to be much help to you, but yes, I will come over. So I jumped in my boat and made my way over to his. Now, unfortunately, most of our conversation took place via the chat window because he doesn't have a microphone. And unbeknownst to me, my microphone wasn't recording. That's why we're doing this all in story mode. Yeah, after a quick text conversation, he showed me the way to the rogue dungeon. Now, we've been in one of these rogue dungeons before. You will remember back to last episode. It didn't really turn out all that well for me. So we were still at the entrance to the level where he lost his stuff and we had a very quick discussion discussion of plan before I'd managed to absolutely Leroy Jenkins my way into a spawner that had nothing to do with what our mission was going to get his stuff. Unfortunately by the time that I had finished messing around like with the situation I had managed to throw myself into, uh, Jester had got himself into enough of a fight by his stuff, you know, the main objective of what we'd gone to go do, that when I turned up, it was literally just to watch him die, and then suddenly find myself with a great big problem on my hand. One of the good things about multiplayer combat is whilst one person is focused on the AI, the other person can go in and do whatever needs to be done. This is particularly used to great effect with creepers, when one person is watching a creeper the other person can go in or being targeted by the creeper the other person can go in and just lay waste to it and as long as the target is not lost he will stay focused on the other player who is just keeping a safe distance now when another player dies this means that the AI loses its focus and suddenly will turn and look at the other person this door's a little bit messed up this happened when I put down this iron bar here if I take it away is it going to move it will move back that is weird but yeah, when a, an AI loses focus, generally by the player they're focused on dying, suddenly they will look for another person, and that was me. Now, if I had just stopped and thought about it and had a look at that chupacabra and killed it quickly, things would have turned out very differently. But as it was, I let it take almost all my health down before eventually killing it. I ran away to eat some food, but unfortunately this then made me trapped in a room with a couple of zombies coming at me. I didn't really have anywhere to go and I thought I'd dive right down the middle between them. That turned out not to be the best plan. After a small regroup, which for some reason didn't involve going to get more weapons, I, I don't know, there are many face palmy moments during this whole scenario. This is not the least of them. Don't, don't worry. We went down and there was a skeleton in the way. Now that was no problem uh, for me at least. Sorry, sorry, Jester. Uh, but eventually I managed to take him down. And I've got to say, I am super impressed with the takedown here. Uh, using the environment to the best effect that it can, uh, I managed to take him down with my bare fist. Obviously, Jester had managed to take down a lot of his health beforehand. But, you know, taking down a skeleton at any point with your bare fist is actually quite an impressive feat, especially in 1.10 without a shield. So anyway, at the end of that particular skeleton fight, I was left with a few blocks in my hand. And the impression that Jester might take a little while to get down to me. So I thought, hey, let's go for a little bit of a sneak around. I can make a wall, and that is better than a shield in anybody's money. Turned around the corner, and there was a zombie to protect myself from. So I started throwing up the wall. Unfortunately, I misclicked a couple of them, and my gravel turned into flint. Not an ideal scenario in that situation. So I decided to turn around and peg it. Now, I hadn't seen Jester come in, and whilst I am freezing on this particular frame to show you him, here. I didn't spot him when I turned around and ran away. Running out of the corridor, there was a load of explosions. I had no idea what those were about. In fact, even now that I know Jester was behind me, I still don't really know what those were about. But I got chased up the stairway. I turned around. I was trying to uh, fight the zombies off, trying to secure the stairway. And unfortunately, I got knocked off. So I was like, okay, now or never. Managed to run through towards where all my stuff was being collected, you know, because that's what happens in a grave. Things get collected there. Uh, grabbed all my stuff, but unfortunately I was being followed. Uh, I jumped off for a little bit of freedom, and I should have stayed on the glowstone that was there. Unfortunately, I decided to run off and try and pillar my way up. Uh, now, this wouldn't have worked anyway, but I didn't have any blocks in my inventory, so it went terribly wrong anyway. 
With two live gone and only two left, uh, I was like, hey, dude, we, we need to go get pit picks. We need to be a little bit sneakier about this, which is what we did. We went back to uh, Jester's place. We got ourselves all fully kitted out in iron gear with an iron pick, and we went back again. Now, this time we sealed up the main entrance to the branch we were diving down, uh, mainly to buy ourselves some breathing room on the way out, I think. So we dug through the wall, and I found myself in a very, very dark area. So I went towards the light because I didn't have any torches on me. Uh, major oversight number two. Found Jester's grave and was like, hey dude, your grave's here. And then for some reason decided that I didn't want to hang around and help him out do that. Uh, bad, bad etiquette there. I, I apologise, Jester. I'm not even sure why I did that. I then ran to my stuff, got my stuff, so that, that was all good. Nothing bad happened, but you know, I still feel pretty terrible about it. So I got all my stuff and I found myself deep within one of Je Jester's claimed chunks. This meant that I couldn't put any blocks down, I couldn't put any torches down, I couldn't dig my way out. Thankfully, at the very edge of the, the area I was trying to get into, there were a few unclaimed chunks that I could take advantage of, uh, dig myself a small stairway up, and find Jester in the main corridor, the main hubway that we had originally found ourselves in. Now, I can see he wanted to light up the spawn area, so I thought this was a good idea. Unfortunately, this was also in his claimed area, so it wasn't exactly something I was going to really be able to help out with. I was there to help with the combat, but unfortunately, when you can't speak to each other, it's very easy just to end up getting in each other's ways, and we ended up getting a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, thankfully, they were mainly following me, so I ran back to where I got my stuff, jumped down, did a little pillar up in the area that I knew was safe to pillar, and then gave them the old one-two jukes and managed to make my way back up another area and block lock them down below. At this point, I called maybe it's time to escape before we lose any more lives. Jester agreed, and we carried on our way back up to his. And that's the story of how I am a terrible friend to take with you on an adventure. I am so, so sorry, Crazy Jester. But look at all the space we have in here now. We're going to end up taking up quite a bit of it. You can see that this wall kind of comes in uh, here. There's like three or four blocks of the overhang, whereas this still is just the outside skin of the wall. This is unfortunately because I have run out of iron. Talking of mater material wealth, Crazy Jester asked me if I wanted any material remuneration for helping him out. I said no, but if he had any hearts going spare, I would be very grateful. He only had half a heart going spare, which was more than what I was expecting. When I asked him, it was more just of a cheeky thing. Uh, but thankfully, when, that, when you try to go to sleep, uh, some monsters can be spawned in, like a phantom and a geist and things like that. And it used to be, and I'm not sure if it still is, but it used to be that you got little bits of heart off of killing those. And through that, I have managed to get myself two hearts. So I can put myself back up to four lives. That is amazing. Okay, a few things just to talk through with you guys before we wrap up. The first will be the floor. I'm not sure what material to make the floor out of. I'm almost tempted to stone brick the lot and then build uh, little, like, bio features around, if you will, like bits of grass and, and ponds and stuff like that. Armand, how are you doing? You liking your new flat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hang about. Let's interact chat. Yes, yes, he likes his, uh, his new ch flat. Wicked. As I said earlier on, I thought that I was going to end up knocking these through into single buildings. That is definitely going to happen. This one is going to be kind of a store it, I think is what I'm going to call the brand of place here. Uh, and I'm going to just have chests upon chests, or at least, you know, some sort of system here. Drawers, I suppose, will be where we start from. Over there will be the communal kitchen area. And I'm not sure about what to do with these front two wings here. They're going to be little three wide units on their own because this space here is going to stay open. I'm even going to revamp this little thing to make it, I don't know, maybe some sort of giant advert or something. You know, we're on the, like the lower floor of a giant building in a dystopian future. Or not quite dystopian, but has the potential to be dystopian, at least down here. So this place has to be like blaring with adverts everywhere, but really grimy. A little bit like YouTube. But anyway, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. I will see you next time when we're actually going to get some quests done. Yeah, and I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!